Alright, uh, is everything new and it's on here? You're looking at a windowsill repair job. So I just finished putting new sills in. These sills were all rotten. Dry rot. Lots of cars going by. You can see the refuse down on the ground there. A couple of so a bunch of shingles under here that I had to take off. So what happened was this there wasn't a lot of paint on here so there's a whole bunch of dry rot spots um, so I had to uh, dig it out I, unfortunately I didn't videotape the thing my father was helping and I was just uh, you know trying to get it done um, but what I did uh, I took the it was basically a rough cut 2x6 generally speaking and so I just got another kind of a rough cut 2x6 and uh, cut that to size I had to dig out the sill that was in there because uh, it was in there good and a lot of dry rot throughout. So I got that in, then I put a coat of uh, primer on the outside and uh, then I uh, filled with um, some expanding foam here just to seal the cavity and then I'll have to put, uh, I think I have a piece of plastic actually that covers this up. Once the expanding foam dries, um, it's nearly dry right now, I'll, uh, I'll take my knife and just peel that off. Here's one that peels off already. So I'll peel that off and uh, seal that up. On the inside here, I had to take the quarter round out um, because the the sill actually went back down to here. So it was quite a wide sill, you know, from from here to over here. So there's a le space left. So I'll cut I'll cut all this out and put the quarter round back in. I also put some uh, diatomaceous earth in there as well because we've had issues with carpenter ants and uh, you know really. Lots of cars going by. Really, any kind of insects, uh, you know, love these old houses. So I'm, uh, so I got that in there to hopefully help prevent that. Oh, there's lots of uh, car there's lots of ant poison in there as well. We had our house sprayed for ants basically because we had a infestation at one point a couple of years ago. <clears throat> so I do need to replace my sills. But um, you'll notice down there, I will go down there and show it to you. Um, but I didn't replace those. Um, but I did this one and the windowsill over there. I'll we'll go over there now. Now this is my uh, daughter's bedroom. And the sill here, same story. It wasn't as bad as the other one. The other one I could actually push my finger through. So rotten. But uh, I replaced this one. I slotted on a thick coat of um, uh, sealant uh, primer um, to get uh, so that the, the rain would bead off it because um, we do get rain often and I never know one day to the next when the rain's coming. So you can see I didn't have to do much with the shingles below and I didn't have to peel off as much as I did on the other side. You can see the other window there that I was uh, on. Um, but uh, I did uh, fill in so I'll cut this all out and um, make it nice and square and uh, then of course I'll uh, go back over it with maybe some more primer or whatever. I, I didn't have to in this case take this off because I ended up just cutting the sill right along the edge and I you know so the the back portion of it is still in there um, but it wasn't dry rot as bad as the other, other one so that's the process there. The original owner had uh, simply fixed stuff by putting tin you can see a, a strip of tin here on the, the dry rot parts. So that's probably all rotten in there. But he put the tin over it um, to prevent it, uh, well, to, to, make the, to make it go away, basically. Um, but that's not ideal because that tra traps the moisture in your wood, so you don't want to do that. Um, so that's half, a, half the reason uh, why I'm having to fix them now. But suffice it to say, um, I was able to get these two sills in. And uh, you know what, once they're all painted up, no one will know the difference. And uh, they, they look pretty good to me. So we're looking at the outside here. Again, I've went over these with uh, primer. These were all, uh, I, I went ahead and actually scraped them. I don't know if I can have, find an example of one that I haven't scraped yet. But this one has primer on it. Okay, this corner here, you can see this one is uh, really peeling. Um, just peel that right off. And this was how all the sills were, just, just peeling like that. Um, and so we, we scraped the bottom of it. I had the kids scrape.
scrape the bottom of this one and I put a bunch of primer on there just to seal it from the weather. I, I need to do the rest of it, uh, but it's actually not quite the same color. The, the sills were white, so I'm painting the right color there. Here's an example of what we were looking at. So the, the paint was all peeling. This has been scraped pretty much up as far as that. They need to be scraped all the way around. And this is what this is what you get when you're in a hundred year old hundred year old house or more or less. And um, so that was the story with here. You can see this one's pretty pretty rough and gnarly. Um, but again, I slathered on the uh, the primer as much as I can. I don't know if we'll have to do two coats here. Um, but I do. I'll have to do some caulking as well. I'm just letting it dry. Probably come back another day and get get another coat on there. But then, like I say, this needs to be. This is starting to dry rot, and you know it's dry rotten when you can stick your fingernail into it and it just crushes under your fingernail, basically. It's not bad though. It's not dry rot all the way through. And so I opted. Farm trailers going by loud. So I opted to leave this one in here since there's no kind of cavity that, that collects water. So it, it, it will do a little bit, it'll fare a little bit better than the ones uh, up at the top of the house. Um, but I just, uh, probably two coats of primer just to really seal this so the water just kind of slides right off. That's what we're going for there. We go over to this one. Um, I did repaint this as well, same idea. Got the paint scraper. You can see I had some expanding foam in there before. And I did it a little bit up the sides as well because the sides were a little, um, a little bare. And then of course it needs to be uh, scraped all the way up. Now the final, final part, which I haven't even touched yet, is the front porch, which is a project we did when we first purchased the house because this porch actually had a hole in the roof, which was fixed when they put the new shingles on. But this whole part of the roof was actually down. So I had to lift this whole roof, and that was all rotten wood up there. So I replaced that wood. You can see, obviously, the dark wood is the stuff I replaced. Uh, where am I pointing? Right there. And, uh, yeah, and it connects up over here as well. So I had to take these uh, beams out, actually, the uh, poles. And these guys, and uh, these were rotten at the bottom, too. I actually had to get my chainsaw. I'll show you this one over here. Had to get my chainsaw and I cut all the dry rot stuff off and uh, put some new 6x6, six six, uh, I think it's pressure treated with that new um, bromine or whatever it's called, new pressure treated stuff. So the bottom uh, down to the uh, island stone base, the footing there, is the new 6x6 six six and, uh, and I just have it screwed in here. It works. It's stayed there for a couple of years so it's probably not the best way to do it. but. So you can see all the paint peeling up here, so I need to scrape this, and I need to prime this. And I haven't done this in a couple of years; I haven't got around to it. Um, so I got a, I got a little bit of work ahead of me. You can see it all needs to be scraped up in there. Um, that's what happens. It's ha had it was wet for many, many, many years, and so a lot of a lot of dry rot. But I'm, most of it I'm going to try and salvage, and just kind of paint it up best I can, and hope it stays there. I'm not going to be too picky about it. Um, but I did replace, you can see a lot of boards that I replaced there to, to uh, fix the structural the structural part of the roof there and get, get this sat back up where it needs to be. It's still sitting lower than the rest of the, uh, the porch. You can see over there, nice white. I didn't have to do anything to that side. Um, so thank the Lord for that. But yeah, I still have this to paint, so that'll be a, another project for another day. So I just want to show you this is the kind of stuff that you have to fix when uh, when you've got a 100 year old house, like I say, a heritage house of sorts, and uh, a lot of work. I don't even know, I think we'd have to hire somebody to uh, paint the whole house. Probably we'd end up shingling the whole house, just re-shingling the whole thing, uh, because I think it's too much work to actually scrape the existing shingles. probably easier just to rip them off and put new shingles on. A lot of paint work needs to uh, happen up here, as you can probably uh, tell. A lot of scraping and painting that needs to be done, um, and that's that's a large expense to get that uh, done. So, for now, we're just kind of holding on, and uh, hopefully, it doesn't come to a point where we absolutely have no decision. We we absolutely have to make some decision, one way or the other. But so far, we're just. Uh, 
doing the, the maintenance that we can do that we're uh, we're able to ourselves for the least amount of money basically so and uh, here's what here's the shingles i took off from underneath the sill up there which i uh, still need to replace so anyways i thought that was uh i thought i'd show you that to you guys and let you know the the maintenance the other stuff that goes on around the homestead when you're on a homestead especially in north america or, or um, the uk often homestead means you're in an old house you know in, in the middle of nowhere possibly and uh what comes with that is a lot of maintenance maintenance fixing carpentry painting all sorts of stuff so it's not just uh animal husbandry keeping chickens and pigs and all this kind of stuff it's also doing a lot of these repairs um that uh, otherwise you know you, you if you just buy a new house you don't have to do this stuff uh, but uh when you buy an old house, you have no choice. Anyways, I will leave it there, guys. I hope you uh, found that informative. I don't know if it was informative or not, but anyways, if you have comments or questions or you, you have a way that you think I should be doing it, uh, let me know. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.